everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lisa Hart and today's video is very different to any other content that I've previously rolled out. Today I'm going to be talking about something I'm going to be training for for the future months. And the big reveal is, it's the Run Disney 2022 Marathon. I'm so excited to say that I'm going to be able to run in this marathon. It's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time and the opportunity has really presented itself. I now live in the USA so it's obviously not so much to travel to get to the event. Now obviously there's going to be a few bumps along the way so I'll go through that in a little bit. But first of all, I'm going to give a little bit of a backstory into why I want to do this event, what I'm looking to expect on the day of the event, and the training schedule that I'm going to apply prior to the event. So backstory, I have done marathons before, it's not something completely new. Obviously with two children, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. After having my daughter, I kind of lost the motivation and the drive to do long distance running. But after having my little boy, I know that I'm a bit more settled, I'm much fitter and much healthier than after my first pregnancy, so I want to give it a go. So back to my actual marathon experience. I've done three marathons in my marathon career. My first one was back in 2016. I did the Brighton Marathon. It was such an exciting event and I didn't expect to get the buzz that I did. I was enjoying the training, but I was doing long distance anyway and I didn't really prepare myself, nor would I say I followed a proper training plan prior to my marathon other than thinking I've got to run as long as possible in as short a period of time as possible. My first marathon, I did it in three hours and 25 minutes. So I was really, really happy with that time, obviously. And I think about half an hour after completing the race, I said I'm never doing one again. The next day I booked for 2017. So I definitely had caught the marathon bug. The next year, I didn't do as fast a time. I did three hours and 27, so it was a couple of minutes more, but I felt much more comfortable and much more confident. And I knew that I could do faster than what I did at the Brighton Marathon. So I actually booked for the Milton Keynes Marathon, which was three weeks later, and I completed that in three hours and 21 minutes. Still with no training, I hadn't been to a running club as such. I still wasn't following a proper training plan. So there was definitely a learning curve for me other than to just go, I'm going to go and run as long as I can, as quick as I can, for as many times as I can in the week. And I wasn't fueling myself efficiently either. So I was very lucky that I was able to actually run as quickly as I did. On race day, I definitely got the nerves. But as soon as you start running, all those nerves completely go away because as soon as you're running, you're back to your normal schedule and you just enjoy it. And there's such a great atmosphere I find with marathons that you probably don't find with a lot of other things. I do find that it's a very, very special time. So I can only hope that actually going to run Disney is going to have the same sort of buzz, the same sort of vibe. You're obviously going with a lot of people that want to go to the happiest place on earth. So I'm hoping that that's going to correlate to waking up really early and starting a race at five in the morning. That process has not quite set in just yet. So what can I expect on race day? Well, I know that I've got an early start, so that's going to affect what I do prior to my actual event. So making sure that I actually do early runs, which is something that when you have little ones, waking up earlier than what you need to isn't the best thing or something that you particularly want to do but I'm gonna give it a go see how it goes with doing the early runs I have been watching a couple of YouTube videos about marathon racing at Run Disney just to see if there's any difference one is the start time and that is getting up at two in the morning there is a bit of a walk to the start line but other than that it's basically the normal sort of protocol you go into your group you wait for the beeper off you go will it be the same as previous years I'm not so sure so I've looked at previous years there's been fireworks there's been characters there's been the whole works being a competitive runner I'm probably not going to stop for photo opportunities with the characters I don't know if they're going to be even be around with Covid and everything that's going on at the moment but even if they were I'm not looking to do it from that perspective I can see the characters after I'm going to see if I can try and run it in as good a time as I've been doing previous now obviously in terms of expectations on my time that's going to be probably one of the biggest things that I've got to face when I was running prior to doing my marathons back in 2016 and 2017 I was an avid runner running probably 40 50 miles a week in the gym as well I would be able to do an hour hour and a half training sessions I don't have that time <laughs> I really don't at the moment I'm a stay-at-home mum with my four month and my two and a half year old daughter so I really got to make sure that my training plan still fits around them but allows me to progress hopefully as much as I need to so will I hit a sub 330 I don't know and that's something I'm going to share with you along the way to show you how I'm progressing through my training whether I'm actually hitting those landmarks and those targets I need to along the way or maybe I'm going to have to settle for something a little bit less. I'm uber competitive and I'm terrible for if I want to hit something I will try my best to get that mark so I will probably try for a sub 330 again. So another thing that I'm always keen on knowing prior to race day is the type of course. I'm doing the full Disney marathon so I'm going around all the parks which is very exciting. I'm a huge Disney fan anyway so to be able to run around the parks which trust me I do normally you can ask my husband he will always tell you that we are running forwards and backwards sideways all across the parks to find the next ride that we can get on. So it's not something I'm 
not used to, but to actually do a running course through it is really exciting. We're also gonna obviously be running in between the parks as well, so there's gonna be sides of the parks and the actual complex that I've not really seen or witnessed. With that in mind, I not only like to look at the course itself, but I like to look at the elevation. The elevation is really important because it can help you to plan what you need to do in your training sessions in terms of if you need to do loads of hill running. So in terms of numbers, the number of people that attended the Brighton Marathons was very heavy, so you were crowded in to start off with. Now coming from two perspectives, one from the COVID perspective, that can be quite a daunting factor. I have been to one concert previously and that was quite a daunting factor to be around so many people. So will that affect my mindset on the day? I'm not so sure at the moment. The other factor is if you are in a crowd of people and you want to start off your run, it can actually affect the beginning of your race, even if you're at the front pack, because you've got people that you've got to get around, get past in order to get to a free spot where you feel like you can actually pull through. Later on in the race, you tend to normally have enough space around you. It is just that horrible bit where you feel like a sardine in a tin at the start of the race. The other thing that I've got to keep in mind is will there be masks? So for the masks, I'm a bit worried because I don't particularly want to run with a mask. Walking with a mask isn't always the best thing to do, especially in a humid climate, though humid and running and a mask, not the best thing. So training plans. Disney have provided me with a training plan. I'll go more into that in a second. But at the moment, I've been doing about two runs a week and then progressing to three runs. Unfortunately, I did have to have a little bit of surgery on my feet, so that put me back a couple of weeks, which is slightly annoying, but I know it's going to be for the best in the future. So in terms of the amount of running that I'm doing, I'm trying to build up so that I can do three consistent 5Ks by the end of August. And then into September, I'm really going to ramp it up in terms of the training plan. Now with the Disney training plan, it is a 29 week training plan. It's only three sessions a week, which is very light for a training plan, but it is a very effective one. It tells you that if you do one long run a week and you have two slightly shorter runs a week, it gives you enough recovery time. It allows you to build up the intensity without completely exhausting yourself kind of about halfway through the training plan, which some can do. I'm actually going to follow more of the Brighton Marathon training plan, which I've seen before, and I used it in terms of knowing the distances to try at the weekends, but I didn't look at the tempo runs. I certainly didn't do that the hill runs. So I wasn't using the training plan as efficiently or effectively as I could. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going to use that and it's a 16 week training plan. So it gives me just about enough time to get ready for the race. But I've also done the few workouts before to get me back to my base level. Now, obviously it's been a long while since I've done proper running. So I have to remember a couple of things. One is your breathing pattern. It's really weird because you run and you run all the time and you just know how to breathe. You don't do it for a while and then you go back to running and then you get a stitch within two minutes because you're not remember how to use your diaphragm efficiently. You're using a lot of your neck instead to breathe. You're using a lot of the upper body to actually breathe rather than using it from down below. Don't think about how to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. So there's really key factors that can help you to overcome the basics. And then obviously there's the physicality of running in itself. In terms of the mechanics of running, they can come back quite quickly. I myself found that the rhythm of running itself can fall back nice and easily. You just got to remember that when you start training, you don't want to sprint at the start. You really need to think about pacing yourself because you don't want to run too quickly because you'll end up going into more of an anaerobic threshold. That's really hard to recover from. It can deplete stores very quickly, build up lactic acid rather than going into your aerobic stores and burning those carbohydrates and those fats more efficiently. So why am I showing this on this channel? Well, what I want to do is to actually provide you with some information on how to train for a marathon. So over the coming weeks and months, it won't be every week, but there will be updates on what I'm currently doing when I'm training, helping you to actually prepare for your own marathon. What I would suggest as the three tips right now is one, find a really good training plan that can suit your lifestyle. So if you find that you've got enough time to do a 29 week plan and you've only got to do three runs a week, two, get a base level of running. Don't go into a marathon not even knowing how to run. So at least do some brief runs, even if it's around your block a couple of times, just get used to the mechanics of breathing and running at the same time. And then the third thing is to set yourself an achievable target. So if you know that you can do below four hours, set yourself a target of below four hours. If it's your first marathon and you get four hours 30, it's not the end of the world. And the bonus tip is just to be aware of your recovery. When you first start training for a marathon, particularly if you're doing a lot of runs, you may find that you become in 
injure very easily, you may be fatigued, so make sure you do buy a decent pair of running shoes that will definitely help to eradicate a lot of problems, particularly around the ankles and the knees. Wear sweat wicking clothing. Don't try and bog yourself down with loads of layers. You'll overheat. You won't need to wear them and you'll end up having to throw them off as you run. Make sure that you're wearing clothes that you're going to mimic in your marathon race. I would even say, like particularly with shorts, wear the shorts you're gonna wear on your marathon day. You don't wanna wear ones that become then restrictive. And when you train, make sure that you try to take water in on your runs or you try the gels out before you do your marathon race. You need to get your body accustomed one to the gels because they can have a funny um, effect on your stomach. But also with water, you need to know how to drink water while you're running or even if you have a break to run without any causing any cramps or making it feel like a bit sloshy in the stomach again. So you wanna make sure that you're training with water and with gels. This is the end of that video. I hope you like this one. Obviously this is very different, so if you enjoyed it, please make sure that you give it the like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to keep an eye on all the progress throughout the coming months till January the 9th. So make sure you do keep an eye out for the videos, see the progress, see how the training is going. But for me, until Friday, it's bye for now.